Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the University of North Carolina, Ms. Margaret Stallings. Spellings. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. What a terrific day, beautiful day in Durham, North Carolina, and a day of much excitement. I am honored to preside over the installation of an experienced leader in higher education and a truly passionate individual who has demonstrated a commitment to North Carolina Central University's pillars of truth and service. Elected as the 12th Chancellor, Dr. Jo Johnson Akinlea is carrying on the legacy of an institution that has a rich history in this city and has produced some of North Carolina's and the nation's finest educators, business leaders, and politicians. Would you please join me in thanking the NCCU Symphonic Band under the direction of Mr. Thurman Hollins for the selection rendered during the processional. First established as the National Training School in Chautauqua for the Colored Race by Dr. James E. Shepard, a visionary educator, accomplished pharmacist, and prominent business leader who first opened these doors of opportunity to talented and curious young men and women in 1910. Some 107 years later, the campus has expanded from a small footprint of land to encompass 106 acres, including two high-tech research institutes and a storied law school, which counts among its alumni such notable figures as Leroy Johnson, H.M. Michaud, Maynard Jackson, Willie E. Gary, Wanda G. Bryant, Representative G.K. Butterfield, and former Governor Mike Easley. The institution's 30,000 alumni and more than 8,000 students reflect the vast and varied communities that make up our great state. From small agricultural centers in eastern North Carolina to thriving <clears throat> urban cities in the Piedmont and picturesque towns nestled among the mountains and foothills. Those who matriculate here at NCCU not only earn competitive academic credentials and skills to be successful in their chosen careers, they also gain an empathetic spirit from having contributed to the surrounding community. As we honor North Carolina Central University's rich history, today we add to its leadership record as we install a new chancellor with a strong commitment to this institution. Positioned in North Carolina's mid-state region, this university is poised for new growth and innovative research under, under the direction of Chancellor Akinlehi. Chancellor Akinlehi has a number of people here with him to celebrate this memorable occasion and most significant day. First and foremost, we must recognize his family, who provided the support and encouragement leading up to this day, and he will to continue to play an important role as he assumes this new role. Joining him today are his wife, Juanita, his daughter, Nikki, and his son, Peter, and a host of other family members and close friends. Please join me in offering them an official welcome into the Eagle's Nest. There are other notable guests with us whom I'd also like to recognize, many members of the governing bodies that support and lend stature to this public university are represented here today. I ask that they please stand and remain standing when introduced. Please hold your applause until all have been recognized. Will all federal, state, and local elected officials or representatives from their offices please stand? Will all members of the UNC Board of Governors please stand? Will former NCCU chancellors, as well as current and former members of the NCCU Board of Trustees and the NCCU Foundation Board please stand? 
Will chancellors and representatives from sister institutions in the University of North Carolina system please stand? Will presidents and representatives from other institutions of higher education in North Carolina throughout the United States and abroad, as well as delegates from learned societies, fellow educators, and other individuals representing professional and service organizations, please stand. Thank you all for being here today. I'd also like to acknowledge the many community leaders, teachers, and UNC board members across the state who could not attend today's ceremony, but I know they offer their support and encouragement today. The Reverend Michael Page, pastor of Antioch Baptist Church in Durham, will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our strength for years to come, our shelter in a stormy blast, Lord, you are our eternal home. Creator and sustainer of this universe, we pause and give thanks for this wonderful day that you have blessed us with. We thank you for the opportunity to come and celebrate this visionary leadership that you have sent forth here to North Carolina Central University. Thank you, O oh God, for Dr. Johnson O. Accolade and his entire family. May you continue to shower him with your blessings and crown him with love and understanding more importantly, patience, as he continued to lead the helm of this university. Thank you for your power and how you continue, God, to open up unto us opportunities that we might continue to educate young people to be leaders across this nation. We thank you for this wonderful gathering on today, and we pray now that you would center your love and your understanding around us as we provide this installation for this chancellor. Thank you, O oh God, for your majestic works and all that you continue to do in our lives. Now, as we celebrate, be amongst us, stand with us, walk with us as we continue to journey through Eagle Land. We give you glory, honor, and praise for all of your mighty works. It is in your mighty name that all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Chancellor, your leadership is already supported by a number of individuals and groups who serve as partners and advocates for you and on behalf of NCCU. These include state government executives, community leaders, university administrators, colleagues, students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Ronald Penny, Acting Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Revenue, is the first of our honored guests who will deliver comments on this occasion, speaking on behalf of Governor Roy Cooper. Secretary Penny will be followed by Ms. Wendy Jacobs, Chairman of the Durham County Board of Commissioners. Next, the mayor of the city of Durham, Dr. Steve Shul, will provide greetings. He will be followed by the chairman of the University of North Carolina Board of Governors, Lewis Bissett. Greetings will conclude with the chairman of North Carolina Central University's Board of Trustees, Mr. George Hamilton. This assembly of state and local officials alongside university representatives is a reminder that the University of North Carolina system is integral to our state's leadership. Chancellor Akinle, you are not just in charge of a university, you are helping to lead Durham and the entire state of North Carolina. We are now pleased to welcome Secretary Penny. Secretary Penny, thank you for being a part of this installation 
Your contribution to this occasion speaks volumes about the state's support for NCCU, for the system, and this new chancellor, Secretary Penny. Obviously, I am not Roy Cooper. <laughs> the governor's duties call for him to uh, have to be somewhere else. His, his uh, schedule is quite fluid, but I can assure you he is committed to North Carolina Central and the betterment of this institution. I am Ronald Penny. I am your Secretary of Revenue, and this is the week, and I thank each and every one of you for your contribution. <laughs> the state of North Carolina. It is an honor for me to be here and speak on behalf of the, of the governor, uh, because this governor is committed to education and committed to historically black colleges and universities. I thank President Spelling. We sort of travel around together, I guess, now um, for that introduction. I. The, the other day as we were, you can smell the money in our building now as, as, it, as it comes in, and I was talking to my staff about the $30 billion that we collect each year. The, and the, but it's more than just the volume of that money, it is the impact of that money. And one of the best investments of that money, one of the investments that, that pays off for North Carolina over and over again is our university system. And I'd like to take this time to thank the Board of Governors, the members of the faculty, the staff, the students, the alumni of North Carolina Central University, a faculty that I used to be a part of. I'd like to thank you all for the work you do for the state of North Carolina. I was born on the campus of Florida A&M University, but I was born to a lady who had studied under James E. Shepard. So I was born learning the stories of North Carolina Central University and the long storied history. Today, Chancellor, you take the helm of a university that, that, that does not only change the course of the history of the state of North Carolina, it helped to mold the history of this nation. No history of North Carolina is complete. No history of North Carolina is complete without the history of North Carolina Central University. Today, Chancellor, you take the helm of a university whose graduates take serious the motto of truth and service for then and now. Graduates from this institution boldly speak truth to those who would abuse their power and compassionately serve those who seek justice and opportunity. Today, Chancellor, you take the helm of a university that continues to find new ways to contribute to our state. Under the Eagle Promise, North Carolina Central helps its students become leaders that help build this state. You help the students become globally competitive in, in a dynamic economic market, and you help these students engage in their community. And that is why, for this administration and for this governor, partnering with this institution is very important and it is a priority. In fact, we have a governor who appointed the most diverse cabinet in the history of the state of North Carolina. Four, four of his cabinet members have degrees from a historically black college or university. And there, there are two others that want to hang out with us, but they, they can't do that. In the first four months of his administration, he had a meeting with the leaders of the historically black campuses. So, Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the governor of the state of North Carolina, the governor of the ninth largest state 
in this union and the governor of the 10th largest economy in this union on behalf of the 10 million citizens of the state of North Carolina, and I would be remiss without saying it on behalf of the 12 million taxpayers of the state of North Carolina. We, we love you taxpayers. We congratulate you today on your installation, and we look forward to working with you to advocate for the advancement of this institution, for we know that the future of North Carolina is intertwined in the future of North Carolina Central. We look forward to working with you to create a university that challenges its students to dare to dream, not just ordinary dreams, but of a world that your fathers and mothers could not even imagine to take the learning of their mind to the place where the passions of their heart meet the talents of their hands. Chancellor, you, we look forward to working with you to continue the dream of James Shepard, of Alfonso Elder, Samuel Massey, Albert Whiting, Leroy Walker, Teronza Richmond, my hero Julius Chambers, James Ammons, and Deborah Saunders White to build a dream of a community that focuses on one simple but enduring thought, truth, and service. The helm is yours, Chancellor. Chancellor Akinule, members of the Board of Trustees, President Spellings, members of the Board of Governors, elected officials, fellow university chancellors and presidents, faculty, alumni, students, and all esteemed guests gathered here today for this momentous occasion. It is my honor and privilege to bring you greetings on behalf of the Durham County Board of Commissioners. Today we come together to commemorate and celebrate the installation of Dr. Johnson O. Akinulei as the 12th Chancellor of the great North Carolina Central University the first public institution in our nation dedicated to providing a liberal arts education for African Americans. Chancellor Akinile will continue the legacy of visionary leadership begun nearly 11 decades ago by Dr. James E. Shepard. North Carolina Central University and Durham are inextricably linked. Graduates of this university, lawyers, business leaders, elected officials, nurses, educators, athletes, musicians, scientists, social workers, public administrators, and many others have shaped the very foundation of Durham and continue to contribute to and lead our community. We benefit every day from the scores of students who participate in service projects throughout Durham County. The future is bright for North Carolina Central University with Chancellor Akinale's transformative vision of excellence, innovation, partnership, and investment, the Eagle Promise, and the opportunities to be harnessed from downtown revitalization and a light rail station at your doorstep. On behalf of the Durham County Board of Commissioners, congratulations, Chancellor. I look forward to working with you and strengthening and growing the collaboration and partnership between North Carolina Central University 
and Durham County. Thank you and congratulations. Good friends and esteemed guests, what an honor to be here today with you. On behalf of my colleagues on the Durham City Council and of the entire Durham community, I want to welcome everyone who has come to this wonderful place on this beautiful spring day to celebrate the insta installation of Dr. Johnson Akinleye to become the Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. I know that we're all here because we have some personal attachment to this university and I want to tell you about mine. My first job when I finished graduate school was here on the faculty of NCCU and I'm forever grateful for that opportunity that launched me as a young man on my career. And I was a young man. I was also, it was in the early 1970s, I was a scrawny kid with hair down to my shoulders, and to be honest, I really didn't know what I was doing as a new professor, and if you've been a new professor, you understand what I mean. But I had wonderful colleagues, and I had a mentor. Her name was, and still is, Miss Sarah Bell Lucas. <laughs> Miss Lucas was the counselor in my department. And she didn't just lay her hands on the students, she laid her hands on me. And she didn't take them off the whole time I was at NCCU. She kept me centered and supported and moving forward. My job here at Central was to work with freshman students who were the first members of their families ever to attend college. I was keeping them on track, but Ms. Lucas was doing the very same for me. What a gift to give to a young academic and that's the kind of nourishment that this university has given to faculty and students through its entire history. My students were thrilled to be here on this campus. They knew that their, this university was their ticket to success. They immersed themselves in the intellectual life around them. They read new books, forged new bonds of friendships, crossed new frontiers, places that no members of their families had ever been before. Today, the North Carolina Central University plays that same role in the lives of thousands of students, the role that Dr. Shepard envisioned more than a century ago. And today, we are here to lift up a new leader to continue this great work, a leader whose energy and vision and capabilities we know well, a superb leader to lift up a new generation of eagles. I count Dr. Johnson Akinleye as a friend, and it is an honor for me to help usher him into his, real, into his new role as chancellor. Dr. Dr. Akinleye, as you work to make NCCU one of America's best public universities, I want, to know, want you to know that you have the total support of the city of Durham and of all of our residents. The close partnership between city government and NCCU is crucial to both of us. We want to work with you on affordable housing, on public safety, on supporting our public schools, on entrepreneurship, and jobs, and the hard sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities. And we want to build an 18-mile light rail line in the next decade, which will, rock, which will start right here on Austin Avenue at NCCU, and connect your students and faculty at high speed to all the opportunities that our region has to offer. NCCU is Durham's crown jewel. The success of our community is intimately bound up with the success of this great university. I want you to know, Chancellor, that you can call on me at any time as mayor of the city of Durham and on, and on our entire city council to work with you and to be a champion for NCCU in every possible way. On behalf of the Durham community, all of us, every single person in this city, congratulations on your ascension to this high office. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, Mayor, it's a magnificent day. 
here in Durham, North Carolina, on the campus of North Carolina Central University. You know, they made me a little nervous this morning, seating me over here next to the secretary. He kept looking at me and saying, are you sure you filed your tax return on Tuesday? So, yes, secretary, I did, I, I promise. I'm Lou Bissett. It's a great honor to be here with you today as chairman of the UNC System Board of Governors. And I would like to take a minute to recognize the other members of the UNC Board of Governors who are here with us today. Pearl Burris Floyd, Secretary. Members Randy Ramsey, Alex Mitchell, Phil Byers, Steve Long, David Powers, and Tyler Harden, our outgoing student member. Would you all raise your hands, please? Thanks for being here. <laughs> UNC board member and former North Carolina Central University Board of Trustees member, Darrell Allison, asked that I ex extend his sincerest apologies for not being able to join us here this morning but he guarantees he'll see you all tonight. On behalf of the Board of Governors, it's a pleasure to be here today among the proud members of the Eagle Nation, devoted friends of North Carolina Central University to celebrate the rich history of this institution and the bright future that lies ahead. Last June, when the Board of Governors convened to elect a new chancellor for North Carolina Central University, we heard President Spelling speak of Dr. Akinle's exceptional blend of leadership and grace at all levels of public higher education as he assumed the role of interim chancellor during a very difficult time for this university. In his strength and leadership, we saw a new vision for North Carolina Central University emerge, and we continue to see that today through Dr. Akinlea's eagle promise. Chancellor, we have no doubt that this, in this promise, the students, faculty, staff, alumni, and surrounding community will soar under your eagle leadership. Chancellor, welcome. I join my board colleagues and all of my fellow North Carolinians in sharing our grandest hopes for you, your family, and this proud institution. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm George Hamilton. I chair the Board of Trustees here at North Carolina Central University. And uh, on behalf of the North Carolina Central University Board of Trustees, I sincerely welcome you to the installation of the university's 12th chancellor, Dr. Johnson O. Akinlay. <laughs> Having worked closely with Chancellor Akinlay over the past few years, I and, uh, and other board members realize we've been blessed with the appointment of a leader who is clearly possessed of talent, intelligence, and compassion, and who already has made great strides on behalf of our beloved university. On this day, the Board of Trustees extends to Chancellor Akinlehi our deepest respects and our best wishes for a successful future at North Carolina Central University. We're also grateful for the hours of work spent by many planning this grand installation of our 12th Chancellor. It is, uh, it's a period in our history that we will all long remember. And to those of you who have traveled from afar to be here for the occasion, we want you to know we deeply appreciate your loyalty and dedication to this institution and to its leaders. So, the time that we have eagerly awaited has finally arrived, and we gather here with joy and thankfulness in our hearts 
to install and celebrate our new chancellor. It is with great optimism that we welcome this exciting new chapter in the history of North Carolina Central University. Thank you all again for being here, and please enjoy today's celebration. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hamilton and all. The University Choir will now sing Total Praise under the direction of Ms. Roberta Laws. We're in for a treat.
soothing performance. <laughs> Chancellor Akalea's extensive career in higher education spans more than three decades. In that span of time, he has earned the trust of many, many faculty members and administrators. Today, two former colleagues are with us to celebrate their dear friend and colleague. Dr. Ann Taylor Green, Provost Emeritus at Bethune-Cookman University will speak, followed by Dr. Paul Hosier, Professor Emeritus and retired Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at UNC Wilmington. After Dr. Hosier, there will be a special presentation by Dr. Andrew Hugini, President of Alabama A&M University. Dr. Green. It is quite an honor for me to be here today to share a few brief comments about the outstanding new chancellor of this great university. It was a few years ago, around 1989 or 90, that I met Dr. Johnson Accolade. He had come to Bethune-Cookman College, now university, as a brand new faculty member in the Division of Humanities to head the fastest growing program in the division, mass communications. He was young, well credentialed with a strong background at HBCUs, energetic, enthusiastic, and handsome to boot. <laughs> the chairman of the Division of Humanities was ecstatic. The faculty members in MassCom were also they said, we think we have a real leader, and they were right. Dr. Accolade hit the ground running, evaluating, planning, and building a program that exceeded expectations. Students were eager to be a part of this exciting program. Fast forward a bit to around 1995. I was vice president for academic affairs, and it was time to begin the college's self-study for reaccreditation by the Southern Association for Colleges and Schools coming up in year 2000. Those of us in higher ed know what a dreaded time that is. <laughs> the required self-study is chaired by a faculty member. And as I talked with my academic team about who should be asked to take on that very heavy and important role, one name came up upon which all of us agreed and felt comfortable that I should suggest or recommend to our president. That name, Dr. Johnson Akalei. Our president, Dr. Oswald P. Bronson, readily agreed with my recommendation. He had also been impressed with Dr. Akalei, and Dr. Akalei agreed to take on the task. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will always remember that as a highlight of my tenure as the Chief Academic Officer at Bethune-Cookman, because working with Dr. Akalei on that most important project turned out to not be a dreaded task, but rather a rewarding experience, I think, for both of us. Faculty and staff respected this gentleman, this scholar, this academic, this personable leader, and responded accordingly. When the visiting committee came to us, I had no doubt that we would be reaccredited, and of course we were. Oh, happy day. When the committee gave this report, we passed with flying colors. Dr. Johnson Accolade had led the way. And although I was happy for us as an institution, I kind of knew that, that Dr. Accolade was now headed for greater and broader horizons. He had developed a wonderful and respected relationship with Sachs. He was definitely interested in climbing the administrative ladder in higher education, and he had shown that he was most capable. He soon became my associate vice president, and by then was also dean of the School of Arts and Humanities. Now holding these two positions, 
He also wrote the proposal for the college's first graduate program in transformative leadership, which of course gained approval from Sachs with his leadership. And that led the college to university status. Is there anything this man cannot do? As dean of the School of Arts and Humanities, he was adored by faculty and students alike. They called him Dr. A. Let's hear from a few of those from your past, Dr. Accolade. Dr. Robert Williams, retired professor of music, said about you, Dr. Johnson Accolade is a renaissance man. He was one of the best administrators Bethune-Cookman University has ever had. He was a friend to everyone and is a great family leader. Dr. Elsie Wanjoy, now professor and head of the mass communication program, sends this message. Dr. Accolade, you are a perfect boss, leader, and mentor. You taught me that leadership is about making others, students, faculty, staff, and community members better but to also leave an impact. Earlier in your career, you developed a mass communications program that has grown and touched the lives of hundreds of young people. Yes, the impact of your leadership is still very much alive on our campus. Ms. Carla Lester, Associate Professor of Speech Communication and Theater, Theater Arts, Dance, had so much to say, I just couldn't include it all without turning out to be the keynote speaker. <laughs> and she's here today. <laughs> but I just had to include a few of her accolades for you. First, she thanks you for providing her the opportunity for growth as a young scholar. She says, he was firm but fair, serious yet compassionate. He guided our department in growth and expansion, but he also got to know us, to know our families, the things that mattered to us. This created a family atmosphere that allowed us to not only support each other professionally, but also personally in our life celebrations. He set the standards for work high for students and faculty yet still offered a nurturing environment for both. Indeed, he is a leader and mentor who cares about those with whom he works, transforming their lives. You know, it is one thing to want to do something. It is another to want to do it, have the ability to do it, the will to do it, the energy to do it, and the tenacity necessary to get it done. Your new chancellor has it all. I could not have wished for a more loyal associate vice president than this man. I could not have prayed for a more dedicated, committed academic with whom to share my vision and help me get it done for the good of the university and our students. North Carolina Central University, you have a winner, a real champion for higher education in general and for the education of students who so much need to see and experience persons who serve as mentors and role models for them. You have it all in Dr. Johnson Akinlay. It is my honor and pleasure to call him and his family my friends. May all the good that I and others from his past know in him be showered upon this great university family during his tenure as your chancellor. I salute you, my friend, and may you and your family continue to receive God's richest blessings. Good morning. As I was listening to Dr. Green's comments, I want you to listen carefully to what I have to say, and we did not collaborate. I knew this was going to happen. 
I knew that within a few months of Dr. Akinlea coming to UNC Wilmington, that would be just in a very short number of years in which I would stand with academics, with friends of the university, and we would honor Johnson as a leader of a major university. Today is that day. I don't pretend to have any special ability to predict the future, as I was thinking about that years ago, but I can recognize individuals who demonstrate outstanding leadership skills and personal interaction skills. In the few moments I have to speak with you, uh, I cite two simple examples of Johnson's academic and personal leadership that should suffice to make my point. At UNCW, John, one of Johnson's first assignments was to define and expand the area of, of distance education. At that time, a concept quite new to UNCW. Over the course of a year, and with tenacity and vision, Johnson patiently but firmly introduced skeptical administrators, a reluctant faculty, and inquisitive but uninitiated students to distance education by developing the trusting, can-do, and supportive environment necessary to assure success. The faculty was understanding and compliant, even enthusiastic, and students readily accepted this mode of education. Second, my family and Johnson's family have enjoyed personal and collegial camaraderie over many years. We followed, my wife and I followed the educational decisions and experiences of his children, Nikki and Peter, and celebrated their successes. My wife and I, Elizabeth, can attest that Johnson and Juanita's guidance and direction were critically important in helping build their children's personalities and character, and they strongly supported the children's successes. On the very personal side, while our granddaughter was pregnant, excuse me, with her first child, Johnson said, Brittany, I will be there with you when your child is born. Johnson was there. He took time out from a busy schedule with the university and joined us at that very special moment. In fact, Johnson was the first individual after Brittany to hold our new great-grandchild. This is the kind of leader that North Carolina Central University has selected for its chancellor. I predict that Johnson, under Johnson's leadership, North Carolina Central University will advance in reputation. The university will graduate an increasing number of future state and national leaders. And his vision will help North Carolina Central University extend higher education, including the professional education, to an even greater number of individuals throughout North Carolina and beyond. Congratulations, Johnson. As president, I am pleased on behalf of the more than 30,000 alumni over 6,000 students and 1,000 employees of Alabama a and University, your alma mater, to bring greetings, salutations, commendations, and congratulations to you on this, the occasion of your investiture as the 12th Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. You've had a very impressive, stellar, 
and transformative academic professional career. At each step, you have demonstrated visionary leadership and positively impacted the lives of thousands of future leaders. We are indeed proud to count you among the distinguished graduates of Alabama A&M University. During her 143 storied year history, only four graduates have ascended to the leadership of a college or university in this nation. Graduates who exemplify and are living examples of the embodiment of the university's hymn as found in these words. Many thy brave and loyal sons sent from the shrines on normal hill, filled with a zeal for a task well done, anxious thy mandates to fulfill. As the fourth alumni to join this elite group, Alabama a University is pleased to present you her highest recognition, the Presidential Medallion. Would you please join me here at the podium? The inscription reads as follows. Presented to Johnson O. Accolade, charismatic and visionary leader, strategic thinker, commendable bridge builder, and true advocate for higher education, for the insight, promise, and talent he embodies as the 12th Chancellor of North Carolina Central University in proud acknowledgement of his continuing and long-time commitment to higher learning, community, and civic engagement, for exemplary leadership rendered in numerous influential administrative posts, and in proud recognition of his infinite ties to the people, places, and memories of his alma mater, this presidential medallion, this 19th day of April in the year 2018, Andrew Hugeni, Jr., President, Mr. Chris Robinson, Secretary, Board of Trustees. Chancellor, congratulations, and we wish for you continued success as you lead North Carolina Central to unparalleled heights and soar to zeniths of accomplishments to which eagles fly. Congratulations. Thank you all, and congratulations, Johnson, on that wonderful recognition. Let's once again welcome the University Choir, which will perform an arrangement of Order My Steps.
Thank you, choir. And can we give a special round of applause to the soloist and director, Roberta Laws. Roberta, it's fun to watch you with such enthusiasm. Thank you for your incredible service and your great work in this university. At this time, we'll hear reflections from members of the NCCU community. Michael Hopkins, president of the Student Government Association, will represent the student body. Dr. Carlton Wilson, interim provost and vice chancellor for academic affairs, will represent the university's administration. Dr. Philip Muticia, chair of the faculty senate, will speak on behalf of the faculty. The staff will be represented by Ms. Demetria Robinson, chair of the staff senate. Mr. Sam Cooper, president of the NCCU Alumni Association, will speak for alumni. At this time, please welcome Mr. Hopkins. Good morning, North Carolina Central University students, faculty, staff, alumni, and guests. I am Michael Hopkins, a graduating senior, pharmaceutical science major from Raleigh, North Carolina. On behalf of the student body, it is my esteemed pleasure to stand before you on this momentous occasion in the history of NC Central. Today we are gathered together to celebrate, to honor, and to install Dr. Johnson Akinle as the 12th Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. In my time as a student here, I have had the pleasure of getting to know Dr. Ekinle on a personal level. Through our interactions, I have found him to be one of the most caring, genuine, hardworking, and kind-hearted individuals I have ever met. He is the type of guy that will do whatever it takes to make sure that those around him have the tools to be successful. He is dedicated to leading North Carolina Central to the next level, and he puts the needs of the students above everything else that he does as our chancellor. I remember when he was first declared chancellor, someone asked me how I felt about the hire. And I recall stating, without a doubt, there is no better man for this job. NCCU got the right guy. In regards to his vision, through the Eagle Promise, Dr. Akinle has set forth a clear directive to launch NCCU to unforeseen places. Former President Barack Obama once said, change will not come if we wait for some other time. We are the change we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. North Carolina Central University, Dr. Akinle is the change that we've been waiting for. Let's continue to support him as he catapults us to new heights. Please join me in celebrating our chancellor Dr. Johnson O. Akinle. Good morning. And a special good morning to President Sellins, Chairman Bissett, Chairman Hamilton, and especially to the members of the Shepherd family, the family of our founders, James Shepherd, to the Shepherd family. Thank you for being here. Chancellor Akinle, I bring you special congratulations from your administration. On June 26, 2017, Dr. Johnson Akinle was officially selected by the NCCU community and appointed by President Spellings and the University of North Carolina Board of Governors as the 12th leader of this outstanding institution. Chancellor Accolade's appointment was joyously applauded throughout Eagle Land. However, nowhere was this appointment more welcome than here on campus and among the university's general administration. From academic program directors to vice chancellors, all rejoiced and understood that under his leadership, the university would continue to soar to new heights. To be sure, our beliefs were quickly confirmed when he immediately announced that the university would aggressively pursue and deliver to every student the Eagle Promise. 
a comprehensive program of education and professional development that will ensure that our graduates are prepared and ready to contribute and compete in a global society. President Spellings, please know that with Chancellor Accolade's transformative and servant leadership, this administration will continue to embrace and deliver the Eagle Promise. Fifty years ago, when Chancellor Albert Whiting was installed, he made a commitment to what he termed educating the total student. Here and now, in 2018, this administration is extremely pleased that Chancellor Accolade is providing the leadership that will ensure to every parent, every student, and every citizen of North Carolina that NCCU graduates are the best possible representatives of the total student. As an administrator, it is indeed invigorating to work with a thoughtful strategist who understands the complexities and challenges and opportunities of higher education and the academy. This administration appreciates Dr. Akinley. He can talk the talk because he has walked the walk. He has served as a member of the faculty, as a department chair, a dean, provost, and now chancellor. There is no substitute for experience. On this momentous day, on this sacred campus, we are pleased that the hallmarks of this university, truth and service, and excellence without excuse, will continue to flourish under the guidance of Chancellor Johnson Accolade. NCCU's general administration congratulates our chancellor and we look forward to working with him as this university continues to provide access to a quality education for all students, whether they are rich or poor, rural or urban. It is clear that Chancellor Accolade is committed to upholding this state's constitutional obligation to provide an education for all of its citizens. Congratulations to our Good morning. President Margaret Spelling, Chancellor Kennelly, Board of Trustees, platform guests, and Ingo's family. I bring you greetings from the Faculty Senate and the rest of the faculty body. Chancellor Kennelly, I would like to convey my sincere appreciation on behalf of the Faculty Senate leadership team in, the, in, the recognition, in recognition of your installation as the 12th Chancellor of the North Carolina Central University. I am confident to say that you deserve this honor and the recognition because you have earned it. There are three qualities that affirm your effective leadership and why this occasion is appropriate. You are an inspirational leader, effective leader, and why this occasion is appropriate is that you are a transparent leader who is action-oriented and with great vision to take this institution to the next level. A role model who models shared governance and shared decision making, which is demonstrated by the love of students and the respect for faculty. It has been a privilege to work with you in my tenure 
as the faculty senate chair for 2017 to 18, of which I accepted because of your inspiration and encouragement, especially when you say to me, Dr. Muticia, you have, the, you have good leadership qualities, and I need you to step up to lead. I will always cherish your encouragement, your leadership, and I'm proud to say that I am leaving Faculty Senate in a better shape because of your inspiration and guidance. I will be indebted to you for life, and I thank you for your friendship and leadership. I wish you God speak. Thank you. To the students, faculty, alumni, invited officials, family, and friends, it is truly an honor to bring you greetings on behalf of the staff of North Carolina Central University. As we assemble here today to install the 12th Chancellor of this first choice premier institution, we commit ourselves to delivering on the Eagle Promise. The Eagle Promise set forth by you, Chancellor. To get here, North Carolina Central University has had many trials and tribulations, obstacles and, and, and challenges, but we, as an Eagle family, have had so many more triumphs and victories, accomplishments and milestones. For this institution has a rich legacy that continues to thrive in us and through us, through our continued commitment with keeping in line with our Founder's purpose to the development of young men and women of the character and sound academic training ready for real service to this nation. Chancellor Akalehi, you have been bestowed the highest honor to lead the nest, our chief eagle. Since your arrival here at NCCU, you have not wavered. You have been a shining example of what it means to soar. You advance scholarly research, you advocate for the underserved and underrepresented, and you have trailblazed uncharted territories here at NCCU to spark innovative ideas that develop and result in opportunities that create an enriched environment that elevates our student experience. During my time as staff senate chair, and over the weeks leading up to this momentous occasion, you have been referred to as an academic scholar, a man of humility and integrity, a dynamic leader, but more importantly, a promise keeper. The contributions you have made and will continue to make will ignite a level of insight that is yet to be tapped by generations of eagles to come. So I leave you with this. To you, Chancellor, we have committed ourselves to eagle excellence. So the only way for us to grow as an institution is to deliver on the eagle promise. You have given us our charge and our coordinates are set. The six strategic priorities provided by you will be our flight path on this journey to fulfilling the Eagle dream. Thank you, congratulations. Good morning. Um, before I get started, on behalf of the North Carolina Central University Alumni Association, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for attending this installation ceremony for our 12th Chancellor, Dr. Johnson Akalei. And I want to do mine a little different today, Dr. Akalei. I want to talk to you. We want to charge you. You've really reached out to the Alumni Association. We thank you for your support. Now, I want to take you back. Do you remember a small village in Africa? That's where you came from. Look where you are today, standing before us as the Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. What a great accomplishment.
Now, Now Chancellor, Chancellor, as you, you begin your legacy, you came up with this promise, the, the eagle promise, six priorities. But as today I'm speaking on half the alumni. You and I have had conversations, and I've already told you I'm committed to support you as long as you do things transparently and communicate. If I don't know anything else about you, I know you are a man of integrity and of God's speed. So today, I want to go back to that little village in Africa. I want you to think about your days at Alabama A&M. And I want you to think about the legacy. I want you to think about the culture. I want you to think about our heritage and our traditions. We, this alumni association, are charging you with preserving those traditions here at this university as we move forward. You know, we love our Iowans, and we'll go to the ends of the earth to protect it and to uphold it. It's in your hands now. We will support you. So if you would, join me here at the podium. Chancellor, as president of the North Carolina Central Uni University Alumni Association, and the power entrusted to me as president, I want to ask you a few questions. <laughs> uh, do you agree? to exemplify the high ideals of our alma mater, to render positive service to community, state, and nation, and to bring honor and respect to North Carolina Central University. Are you willing to lead this university in truth and service? Chancellor, at this time, I'm going to present to you a lifetime honorary membership to the National Alumni Association. <laughs> in, in closing, thank you for your great leadership and your support of the Alumni Association. May your career be blessed with continued success and rest assured we are behind you 100%. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you everyone for your remarks. I'd like to pause for a moment to reflect on the significance of Dr. Hoosier's participation in this ceremony and in the audience I also see another representative from UNC Wilmington, Dr. Patricia Leonard. Their presence here speaks to the esteem in which they hold their former colleague. This is not to mention the members of the UNC System Board of Governors with us today and Chair Lou Bissett, who stood by my side for six Chancellor installations. You got the pros out today. They have come today because as one of our institutions moves forward, so do we all. This is not just a momentous occasion for North Carolina Central. This is a cause for celebration across our system. Very shortly, North Carolina Supreme Court Justice Mike Morgan will administer the oath of office. As, Ch as Chancellor Akinle takes the oath, he will place his hand on a Bible held by his wife, Juanita. Following the oath, we will present the university's emblems of authority to the chancellor, including the chancellor's medallion, which we, he will wear during future academic ceremonies to demonstrate his position of leadership. The medallion features the university seal as well as the names and installation years of its 12 presidents and chancellors. He will also receive the university mace, which represents the power of his position and which bears an image of Dr. Shepard, NCCU's founder, and is subscribed with the university's motto, truth and service. Chancellor, I'm fond of saving, saying that our universities are individually remarkable,
collectively extraordinary. Today, you stand at the helm of one of the system's remarkable institutional treasures, North Carolina Central University. You have the responsibility of guiding this place forward, and I know you will do this with the utmost dedication and earnestness. As you do so, you will also be helping to guide something bigger, something extraordinary, our UNC system. Chancellor, will you join me at the podium? I would also ask Justice Morgan, Chairman Hamilton, and Mrs. Juanita Akinle to please come forward and join us at the podium. Chancellor, I can lay ye as your wonderful wife, Juanita, positions herself with the Bible. I want to thank you for bringing this proud alumnus of the class of 1979 of North Carolina Central University School of Law to come back home to Eagle Land. Chancellor, at this time, are you prepared to take your oath as the 12th Chancellor of North Carolina Central University? At this time, then I have you place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right, and I will have you to repeat after me. I, and state your name, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And I, and I do solemnly and sincerely swear, solemnly and sincerely swear that, I will be faithful that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina and to the constitutional powers and authorities which are or may be established for the government thereof, and that I will endeavor to support, maintain, and defend the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, and in entering upon the responsibilities of the Office of Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. I will undertake to fulfill its duties to the best of my abilities and without fear or favor to cherish and encourage sound scholarship and the search for truth and to dedicate the powers of North Carolina Central University to the intellectual, moral, and physical training of youth, of youth and to the development of, and to the development of a, moral and enlightened citizenship. a moral and enlightened citizenship. And I further promise, I further promise to, dedicate to, this university to dedicate this university to impartial, to impartial and, sympathetic service and sympathetic service to all the people, to all the people of, North Carolina. of North Carolina. And I further swear, and I further swear that I will well and truly execute well and truly execute the duties, the duties of the office of, the office of Chancellor, of Chancellor of North Carolina Central University to the best of my, the best of my skill, and ability, skill and ability according to law, according to the law so, help me God. so help me God. Chancellor Akinleye, congratulations. <laughs>
This is the moment when the future begins, when we recognize that the next generation of students will learn guided by fresh leadership and a new vision for the university. But as we stand here and look at the future with heightened expectations, we do not turn our backs on the past. This institution has always embraced change. It was the first state-supported liberal arts school for black students. Today, it hosts a diverse student body. While Jim Crow laws no longer block access to higher education, economic disadvantages, and inconsistent K-12 performance standards often do. As Dr. Akinle leads this university into the mid-21st century, he recognizes the need to innovate if it is to preserve Dr. James Shepard's founding vision to provide North Carolinians with sound academic training requisite for real service to our nation. By expanding distance learning opportunities and K-12 outreach, this university will remain committed to growing access to higher education. By creating pathways that will allow students to complete their degrees within four years, Dr. Akinle will ensure that they will be able to reap the intellectual, social, and economic benefits of higher education. By making local, national, and global engagement a central tenet of the university's compact with students, the Eagle Promise preserves NC Central's nationally recognized commitment to community outreach and fulfills the UNC system's goal of promoting the public good. So while this is a period of transition, the changes in store will continue this university's tradition of innovative excellence. Today, Dr. Akale officially accepts the Twitter handle of Eagle in Chief 12. Given, given that eagles are famous for their independence and ferocity, this handle might not exactly capture the way your chancellor will absorb himself in this community, leading with dedication, kindness, humility, and humor. He embodies precisely the example I have in mind when I say our teachers and administrators should lead by example. On a more profound level, this new Twitter handle fits like a glove. Eagles are renowned for their keen vision, capable of spotting a rabbit on the run two miles away. They have a 340 degree field of vision, which means they don't just gaze at what's in front of them. This gives them the capacity to move with calculated intent while simultaneously reading their surroundings as they fly. Under Dr. Akinle's leadership, this university, Eagles, will set their sights on bigger prey. They will aim for and achieve brighter, more productive, more competitive futures, not only for themselves, but for all of Durham, all of North Carolina, the nation, and the world. I'm proud to officially call Dr. Johnson Akinle Eagle in Chief 12. Friends of the university, it is my distinct pleasure and great honor to present to you the 12th Chief Executive Officer of North Carolina Central University, Dr. Johnson O. Akinle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. I hope it is still morning. <laughs> to President Salins, I thank you for placing your confidence in me. I'm honored, humbled, and privileged to have the opportunity to serve this great academy. The citizens of the state of North Carolina, intellectual learners and scholars from across our nation and around the world in the globally important mission of higher education. The richness and diversity of the University of North Carolina system 
continue to make us one of the best, I dare say the best, public university system in the world. As such, as such, North Carolina Central University is a gem among gems. And I assure you that we will continue to provide North Carolinians with the distinct opportunity and access they need to unearth their potential for future success and realize their professional dreams and aspirations. To Secretary Penny, to Chairman Bussett, and Chairman Hamilton, I thank you for the work that you do on behalf of our students and the citizens of North Carolina. To the mayor of this great city, Mayor Steve Shu, Ms. Wendy Jacobs, Chairman of the Durham County Board of Commissioners, I am grateful for your presence and support of North Carolina Central University. To my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Antilla Green and Dr. Paul Hozier, I thank you both for your kind words and continued friendship over the years. To Dr. Carlton Wilson, Interim Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Dr. Philip Muticia, Chair, Faculty Senate. Ms. Demetria Robinson, Chair, Staff Senate. Mr. Michael Hopkins, President, Student Government Association. And Mr. Samuel Cooper, President, NCCU Alumni Association. I thank you all for your service and devotion to our great institution, North Carolina Central University. To Reverend Dr. Michael Page, pastor of Antioch Baptist Church, in his absence, and our university master, Dr. Reed, my deepest gratitude for your work and for being here. To the president of my alma mater and my good friend, Dr. Andrew Eugene, I am profoundly honored by to honor one of your own. Alabama A&M University gave me the foundation that propelled my career. Please extend my greetings to all of the students, staff, administrators, faculty, and alumni of Alabama A&M. To my fellow servants, leaders in higher education, chancellors from the UN C system, and other chancellors, presidents, and delegates who have joined us today University to as far away as Ghana and Nigeria. I am honored by your presence and know that our roles are critical in shaping higher education to our institutions and other elevate the next generation of innovators and change agents that are needed to propel our country and humankind forward. To all community leaders and elected officials who represent and stand in support of our university, federal offices, we are grateful for your support and for your vote, votes cast and voices raised on behalf of our most important constituencies, students, to members of the North Carolina Central University community, including our students, our esteemed current and former faculty and staff, administrators, board of trustees, foundation board, and alumni. 
began when I arrived on this campus four years ago. Since then, achievements and weathered many challenges. But like the eagles we are, we continue to soar. Thank you for allowing me to be your silent leader. To all who have participated and contributed in some way to make this event the true celebration, especially the installation committee chaired by Dr. Deborah Parker, College of College of Behavioral and Social Sciences, and to our Vice Chancellor for Institutional Advancement, and to all host, the hostesses, our choir, everyone who's had some ways to contribute to make this event what it is. I thank you. I thank you for your time and for your effort. My family has always been the center of my life. To my wife and life partner, Juanita, and our children, I share this moment with you, and I thank you for pouring into me your love, encouragement, compassion, and wisdom. To all other members of my family, as well as close friends and former colleagues, schoolmates, roommates in college, while I'm not afforded the opportunity aim due to the large contingent and time constraint, I want to thank you for your love and devotion and for your, for your presence here today. I would like to take the liberty to ask all my family members, extended and otherwise, who are here to please stand. All my family members, please. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say to you, there is one person here who's my Albert. Albert, please stand. I thank you. I thank you for being there with me. Life's journey and those moments that we shared. Please do know that your presence here today means a lot to me. Thank you so much for coming out. My journey began as appropriately indicated by. Of the Alumni Association began in an ancient Yoruba city in the southwest part of Nigeria, West Africa. Those of you who are students of geography, you may know where that is. It's a very small town. As a young child, I was one of 22 children in our home. And in our home, the phrase, Survival of the fittest <laughs> reigned supreme and mostly displayed at dinner time in the company of my brothers and sisters. I walked three miles to and three miles back from our elementary school every day. We sat, we sat and learned in a class in a hot, temperate weather. In those former appearance, especially my father, that the a better life was through education. 
It follows naturally, therefore, that my parents when it came to education. They drilled into us the value of education. This journey for me continued as I traveled 7,000 miles across the ocean to this great institution and ultimately to this great country with this great institution, North Carolina Central University, an institution that was founded by an intellectual, a successful businessman, a religious scholar who saw and also appreciated the value of education, who simply was not content with his own achievements or affluence as a pharmacist and a business person, nor was he pleased with the status quo, status quo during that era in his quest to provide the opportunity for those who seek to educate themselves without the necessary access, Dr. James E. Shepard founded what became the Liberal Arts College for African Americans, the National Religious Training School in Chautauqua for the Colored Race, and declared its purpose to be, and I quote, the development in young men and women of the character and sound academic training requisite for real service to the nation, end quote. Today, in this very space, sit Dr. Shepard's discussion Green, Ms. Caroline Smith Green, Mrs. Caroline Green Boone, Mrs. Marjorie Donaldson, and Mrs. Annie Day Donaldson. Please, all the family members, please stand. If you are able to. Thank you. Indebted to your forefather for his bold vision and steadfastness in founding this prestigious institution. The torch was passed down to 10 other leaders, women, who in their own rights were pioneers. They each were often first at various points in their careers. I follow behind and want to honor the legacy of my dear friend and colleague, Bill Chancellor of North Carolina Central University, Dr. Deborah Sanders White. <laughs> Under Chancellor Sanders White, tenure and leadership through the declaration of the noble phrase, Eagle Excellence. This university saw impressive growth and academic expansion. I stand before you today as the 12th Chancellor of this prestigious institution with a pledge to continue to uphold and guard the noble mission of this university with fervor and undivided attention. For 107 years, North Carolina Central University has stayed true to Dr. Shepard's vision on its promise, while it continues to be central to transforming lives and matters. On May 25, 1911, this institution celebrated its first graduating class, which consisted of three female students. Ms. Dora Austin of, we of, of uh, Weldon of North, of, of North Carolina, Ms. Beatrice Bynon of Durham, North Carolina, Ms. Nellie Hunter of Lynchburg, Virginia. These women paved the way 
for another trio of young women who became the first, again, to earn a PhD in integrated biosciences from NCCU some 106 years later. These first graduates came to this university to feed their intellectuals and gain the skills and credentials each needed for personal and professional development while he in the powerful story and narrative that we tell today about the relevance, the influence, and the impact of historically black colleges and universities and their graduates on local, regional, national, I stand before you today and proclaim to you that we need not agonize about the preeminence of NCCU and its place in history because NCCU has already earned its place in history through its legacy of producing many firsts and cultivating alumni who have gone on to create their own paths and have truly written their own stories. Amongst them are Jackson, a graduate of NCCU School of Law, elected as first, first African-American mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, and of any major city in the South. First, like attorney Julius Chambers, whose work as an attorney helped shape civil rights law as he stood before I argue the most important civil rights case since the court outlawed school segregation in Brown versus Board of Education 16 years earlier. First, like former Congresswoman Eva Clayton, the first African American woman. First, like double legal H.M. Mickey Marshall, who became the first African American United States Attorney in the South since Reconstruction, when he was appointed to head the, the office of the Middle District of North Carolina, and first, like NCCU Junior, Bethelina Njuramba, the first African American woman elected just one month ago as the president of the University of North Carolina Association of Student Governments. There is no doubt in my mind that North Carolina Central University will continue to play a critical role in contributing to the healthy economic and scholarly fabric of the research triangle, the city of Durham, and the state of North Carolina. With that said, the challenge before us now as we stand in the critical juncture of the 21st century, at the dawn of a new frontier in education, and rethink our role as educators, is how best can we continue to serve the needs of our diverse student population? We must be willing to look inside and outside of the academy for ideas, that transcend the four walls of our institution. We must be ever diligent in how we decide where to invest our time to best position our institutions and students for success. We must refine our ability to understand transitional and ubiquitous technologies and their implications next and how they transform each student's life, work and play and helps them to thrive every day on this so-called smart campus. We must challenge ourselves as faculty, staff and as and administrators to embrace new modalities of organizing and delivering instructions. 
in ways that meet the needs of our students and meet them where they are. Our colleges and universities must continue to respond to student demand and the delivery of programs in high wage fields such as businesses, business, healthcare, and STEM. While in general skills, employers are and have traditionally relied upon, such as critical thinking, communication, and problem solving. to develop inventive academic offerings, along with co-curricular opportunities that engage our students in a wide array of research and learning-based projects that are advancing knowledge through emerging science. The marketplace today is buzzing artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology, bioterrorism, informatics, cybersecurity, biometric, biometric identification systems such as facial recognition, genetics and molecular medicine, bioengineering, and so on and so on. This is the new frontier of education. Connected to it. How are we preparing our students to take advantage of the jobs emanating from these emerging new sites? We must recognize that we have several options for approaching the future. We can focus while also preparing for and predicting the future. Our students deserve and expect the best. We often hear the phrase that we live in a global society. There are almost no boundaries when it comes to sharing ideas and exchanging in meaningful, meaningful dialogue. The only barrier that exists is created by not being open to new discoveries and new solutions. Our students, are, they seek out an environment that feeds challenged and ultimately to be successful contributors to challenge our students to understand what it means to live in an increasingly complex and communication tools are delivered almost daily on their devices of the masses for civic and social change can begin on a quad and quickly spread via a post or hashtag where there is the real possibility of starting an international conflict through a mere tweet that is misunderstood and spread instantaneously across the world. Yesterday, we launched the inaugural International Symposium on our campus that brought from all over the world to begin to engage our students and challenge their minds as they prepare to become leaders on the global stage. As our students graduate and enter the workforce, they are like workplace that does not resemble the classroom nor the institution in which they were educated. A workplace that is becoming increasingly diverse, which big employers seek, promote, and nurture. It is our duty to help our students understand that building a better, safer world We must make developing leaders an integral part of our curriculum. We must teach our students that when we work together, we can solve the world's most pressing challenges, promoting world peace, eradicating poverty and hunger, providing clean water, 
in developing countries. While an 18-year-old student at Morehouse College in Atlanta, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. penned an essay in the college newspaper titled, The Purpose of Education. And I quote, it seems to me that education has two-fold function to perform in the life of a man and in society. The one is utility and the other is culture. Education must enable a man to become more efficient to achieve with increasing facility the legitimate goals of his life, end quote. How well are we as colleges and universities to achieve the legitimate goals of their concept, as you've heard today, of my tenure at NCCU, I established six strategic priorities that we've coined the Eagle Promise, which range from student success and community collaborations to campus safety and infrastructure improvements. The outcome or outcomes of those priorities are four deliverables that we pledge to have provided to our students upon graduation. One, four years. Two, graduate market ready. Have a job the day before your diploma is issued to you. Or be prepared to enter into a graduate program or a professional school. Three, become socially and globally engaged. And four, demonstrate proven leadership. In all of these deliverables, we have begun to put metrics in place and programs in place that would enable us to prepare our students to have this requisite knowledge from these grounds. We are intent on delivering exceedingly in each of these areas. And I think that are part of the University of North Carolina system, I expect expectations, strategic plan, President Spelling. The fulfillment of the Eagle Promise is manifested in students like Joshua Strahan, a graduated senior from New Bern, discovered a passion for history and has secured fully funded graduate fellowships for PhD programs at Duke, Emory, or perhaps it's Jay Garcia, a second year student in our School of Law who earned his undergraduate degree from East Carolina University and has his career goal set on becoming the first Latino governor of North Carolina. <laughs> the stories of Joshua, Jay, and so many others are yet to be fully written. But in each of their stories, there contains a chapter on North Carolina Central University. And each one of us, from our boards, to our administrators, to faculty, staff, and alumni, are contributors to their work. For these students have truly discovered what is central to them. It is my honor, it's my pleasure, to be standing in front of you today as the 12th Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. I am poised, I am ready to work, and I hope that you will join me with your support, with your energy, with your passion in moving our institution, North Carolina Central University, to greater heights. Thank you so much.
We will now present you with the mace representing the power of your office by Dr. Laverne Reed. Thank you, Chancellor. We are motivated by your passion and inspired by your vision, and we look forward to seeing the strategic priorities of the Eagle Promise reach their full fruition. At this time, I would ask Marcus Anderson, an award-winning saxophonist and NCCU alumnus trained under the Jazz Studies program, to perform the final music selection, Safe in His Arms, by, by Vicki Winans. Mr. Ames.
morning's ceremony has truly been a remarkable one. Thank you all for coming near, from near and far to be a part of this celebration. We will end today's ceremony with the singing of the NCCU alma mater, Dear NCC. The lyrics are printed on the last page of the program and we encourage you to sing along. Following the alma mater's conclusion, His Royal Majesty Droller Boso Adante the First, Supolar of the Seychelles, will deliver the benediction. We then invite you to gather with Chancellor and Mrs. Akamaya and the entire across Fayetteville Street between the Eagle Landing and Benjamin S. Robin residence halls, the alma mater. On behalf of the people of Africa and the millions of young men who aspire to achieve great heights, may your elevation and recognition of our history and a legacy to be told for millions to hear. We have a story to tell. I too will go back and acknowledge the works of the North Carolina University System leadership of trustees fair, but that your leadership has been proven education and the track built is real. And this will be said about North there is you came here with a dream to help me. You just didn't come to America's dream. You brought hope to many. And on behalf of those who would like to acknowledge what God has done in your life and who will be inspired by your work, may God protect you. May God defend you. May God lead you. No weapon that and any time God himself will condemn. You are preserved by the blood of Jesus. And there are many who will be for you than those who will be against you. And remember. You are an eagle. 
a lamb, the army of lambs led by sheep. Excuse me, the army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat army of lions led by sheep. Take this lead and make us all proud. We trust your leadership and we believe in you. May the grace of God God fill your life and may your leadership give hope to many. Now may the grace of God that brought us together watch over all of us as we go to our respective homes safe and sound. We honor you and we are grateful for your leadership. God bless you.